Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. I welcome you to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about essay part of RBI phase 2 examination. Now in both RBI and SEBI examinations, essay uh, or English plays a very big role. And therefore it's important that we understand how to write an essay, how to attempt the English paper and also at the same time we practice enough so that we don't fi find ourselves in a black hole when we are attempting the examination. Uh, in order to attempt English paper, you need to understand uh, if we talk about specifically RBI, what are the areas that are covered. So there are three areas that, that are normally covered, essay, pressy and comprehension. Now in this video, I will be talking about uh, one essay and in the subsequent lessons, I will be talking about some essay topics, important essay topics that can be asked in the examination along with the strategy uh, uh, as to how to write these essays what are the points that are important and we will move forward and talk about Pressy as well. If you like this video and like my way of teaching, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon and also visit the website for more content on RBI and SEBI examinations. Okay, so here we have the first essay topic uh, uh, which we are going to discuss today. Now this is one of the tests that has been given to the students and therefore I am picking this up. Uh, the topic is advantages of merging multiple label laws into a single code. Now, merging of multiple label laws or transformation in label laws in India has been in consideration and has been in news for a long time now. And therefore, I feel that RBI might pick it up and ask an essay topic on this. And therefore, we are going to be discussing about the advantages of uh, merging multiple label laws into a single code. Now, the first activity that we, uh, that we uh, have to perform is identify the keywords in any topic that we're given. The keywords here are number one advantages. You don't have to talk about disadvantages. Therefore, this means you don't have to talk about both the sides. You just have to talk about one side that is advantages of what merging multiple label laws into a single quote. So this is a keyword. What kind of code is the government planning to uh, create? You should be aware about that. What and uh, what kind of multiple label laws exist in India? What are the problems associated with them? That also you should be aware about. Now advantages mean that you know the disadvantages attached with multiple label laws because if multiple label laws are being removed, if they had certain disadvantages, that means we're doing something good, right? And the advantages or benefits of a single code, that also you should be aware about. That means advantages of a single code. Now, what can you write in the introduction? There are multiple ways in which introduction can be written. Uh, I would keep it more, uh, you know, uh, I would keep it more straightforward because we directly being asked the advantages of merging multiple label laws into a single code. A more straightforward in, uh, uh, you know, introduction would be to identify and to tell the reader, okay, these are the multiple label laws that we had or this number of multiple label laws we had and now we are simplifying it and merging it into these kinds and this number of single codes. Okay, this is what I've done here. 44 labor laws exist in India presently, uh, but now they are to be merged into four labor laws based on these categories that have been created. All the existing labor laws on wages will be merged into one labor law on wages. All the labor laws on social security will be merged into one law. All the labor laws on industrial safety and welfare, again one law, and all the labor laws on industrial relations again into one law. So this is what the government is doing here. It is merging multiple laws in one category into one code or one law. The idea is to simplify the process of understanding laws and the process of implementing and compliance with, this, with those laws. Okay. <laughs> now, what are the expected advantages? Number one, the present laws were made before independence by the British government. These were exploitative in nature, they are confusing and obsolete. So a lot of uh, problems associated with these laws were number one, they were very lengthy. 
therefore they were confusing which meant lot of uh, loopholes for both the employer employee as well as the inspector or the uh, government servant so that he could harass the people so that he could harass either the employee or the employer they were obsolete in nature they were made in the times of industrial revolution therefore the entire idea of human being idea of law idea of labor was different and they were exploitative in nature because they were made by the british government for the indian uh, people who they were meant to exploit and therefore uh, they were not in the benefits or in the favor of indian people okay too many laws consolidated set of laws which make compliance easy and will also bring ease of uh, doing business for the people so because there are too many laws let's say for social security we have epf we have nps we have ppf we have eps we have epfo makes it a lot confusing we don't understand what what exactly is the ma- meaning of each and the purpose of each uh, so why not make a single code on uh, wages or on social security which contains all of these together it will be a lot more easier they will be in sync with each other uh, there will be a simplified and integrated purpose okay so these are the words that you can use easier laws means less time spent on them by the owners more focus on running of business uh, a very good example here is the number of companies in india which remains small after uh, one decade of starting that is almost three times of what happens or uh, you know uh, what the situation is in the us or de- other developed countries why because country companies in india don't want to grow don't want to expand because uh, the more they expand the more laws they have to comply with which means more harassment by the inspectors by the government servants and therefore in order to stay away from that harassment uh, they decide uh, to not expand that much to not grow that much and stay limited in their area of working and stay comfortable because the laws are too difficult to understand you have to hire professionals even those professionals are not uh, able to understand at times because of uh, high corruption and loopholes available in those laws more convoluted laws means more corruption and harassment by authorities we've already discussed this single law for one area would make it easier for employees to comply now employees also find it equally difficult to understand these laws to understand their rights their obligations and to comply or to be able to implement these laws in an efficient and effective manner now if there is one law let's say on wages one law let's say on social security then they would know okay these are our rights these are our obligations and it will be easier for the labor unions as well as employee unions to comply with those laws presently 60% of workers are not covered under minimum wages act why because uh, they are in the unorganized sector the new law on wages wants to bring that unorganized sector also in the net of social security as well as in the net of wages and therefore it will improve the condition of those unorganized sector workers workers which are you know majority of workers in india inclusion of unorganized sector domestic workers drivers etc only two variables for salary skills and geography now this is an important one presently there are multiple variables for salary based on which your salary can be decided uh, let's say you go for an interview gender is normally used as a decision maker for salary your skill certainly your experience from where have you studied all these things play an important role in deciding your salary or package but it says <coughs> this law says that technically and legally only two variables can be used to decide your salary skills and geography which area do you reside in because every area has a different different wage standard different minimum and maximum wages different standard of living different expenses of living and therefore skills and geog- geography both of them are an important uh, portion based on which the salary is going to be decided now these are the important areas these are the important points that you need to uh, not all eight of them but about four to five of them you need to be able to uh, mention in the uh, in the essay in o- order to send across the message 
to the examiner that you know about it. Essay writing in uh, RBI and SEBI examination is a lot like answer writing of UPSC. You need to uh, push or you need to send across the message that you know a lot about the topic by writing points, different points from different perspectives uh, in a very brief, consolidated and in a very nice manner. Okay. You need not explain on a single point that much that you, uh, you know, forget about the space or you utilize all the space available because that will, that will send across the message to the examiner that you know it only from a single point of view. But you have to be multidimensional in nature. Make sure that you use uh, economic or financial points first because that is what the examination is looking for. Uh, your awareness, your level of knowledge in economic or financial points areas. Okay, So it's important that you mention them first so that you uh, grab his attention, grab his interest in your essay. Also, introduction and conclusion have to be very brief. You don't have to think about them a lot. In the introduction, two, uh, two things can be covered. Uh, what uh, you're going to write or the importance of that topic and uh, uh, why is that particular topic so important. The importance of that and you can also define it. So, let's say uh, you have the introduction in this multiple label laws into say single code. You can talk about the importance of merging multiple label laws into single code. What is being done? That means defining it. And uh, uh, you can uh, talk about, uh, so two things that you can talk about, importance and definition. Here what I have done, we have just defined it. Okay, 44, 44 label laws are to be merged into four. Why are they being merged? Briefly, you can define it. Okay, you can mention that. And then in detail, you will be talking about the advantages only. Okay, so this is how you can make the introduction uh, look a lot organized and less confusing from examination examiner's point of view. When we come to conclusion, you can just summarize in the conclusion or you can give a way forward. How will all uh, the, uh, you know, this entire activity uh, 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 result in something good for the economy, result in a higher GDP for the economy? those kind of things. That's a way forward. Or you can summarize it by just repeating whatever you've written in different words. Okay. So, these are the things that you can do uh, in the essay. Uh, this is one essay topic that I have picked up, uh, which is a part of the entire uh, essay series. Uh, I will be picking up a lot more topics now.